Podcast yeah. number 23, let's play of Pillars of Eternity. Uh, forgive me, I am sick. I'm actually home from work sick today. Uh, I'm pretty doped up, honestly, on all kinds of medicines and stuff like that. But I can't not play video games when I'm sitting here doing nothing. So I figured I'd get into a couple epi- at least a couple episodes of Pillars of Eternity here. Now, if I could just remember where we left off. I'm pretty sure we were in Deerford Village. Um, let me get a drink of my Sunny D in here. if you can hear it or not but it sounds like the dog is going crazy most likely the neighbor's dog is out in the backyard all right that's right we made it into the inn indeed which is where the uh the owner of the inn let me pull that volume down just a little bit Is kind of, I, I just gathered to find her. Kind of Surely even you can understand like that. Mayor. We're decent folk, my lord. Perhaps you should leave and check the wilds. The man wears 80 year style robes. Simple but elegant. Uh, his fine leather show, shoes look like they've been made for padding around indoors. Yep, they're caked with mud. Yikes, blah, blah, blah. My child is out there. Do they not understand? My lord, we're doing everything we can. Unfortunately, beasts take them all. I don't care how you do it, but find her. Yes, Lady Alice, my daughter. I've asked around, but nobody in this mud hole has any concerns beyond their swine. He turned my men away like beggars and seemed downright pleased to be of no use. But you, you're not one of my soldiers. And you look like you're used to getting your hands dirty, if you don't mind my saying so. My lord, a mercenary? If you find her, tell her I won't be upset with her. She can come back and all will be well. I just want to make sure that my Elise, my child, is safe. Nothing in the world is more important to me. Elise. Of course. She's a striking young woman. Bears more resemblance to her mother than than to me. She has auburn hair and and delicate, well-bred features. She must be, oh, 28 or 29 now. (laughs) Okay. We'd stopped in Deerford for a few days. On our fourth evening here, I was making plans to continue our journey. Lady Elise was feeling unwell and went to bed. When I retired a couple hours later, I found that she had vanished. None of my my men had seen her go, and no one in the inn knew where she was. Since then, my people have been coming to the village, but we've yet to find a clue, and the locals have been no help. So my guess is that she's run away. It has nothing to do with... She's not... She hasn't disappeared other than on purpose. A very overbearing father. She's 28 or 29. It was merely a stop along the way to Ina's rest. However, she took ill shortly before our arrival. So it seems prudent to allow her a few days to recover. reached an age where where it is prudent for her to marry uh, given the legacy given this legacy business 
I can't let her fertile years slip by, nor do I want her womb to fester in the presence of so many Hallborn. You think I haven't considered that? Arranging a suitable match is difficult. The best prospects for my child lay... suited for travel, I'm afraid. And unfortunately, Elise has a few other close relatives. My sister and her husband, Elise's aunt and uncle, of course, have been visiting Adir for the past months. And as for siblings, Elise has none. My wife has only given birth to Hollowborn since Elise, that is. I'm Lord Nestor Harren. Defiance Bay. My family has been prominent there since Imperial times. Our primary estate is on the outskirts of Brackenbury, but we have holdings in New Haomar as well. Those went to my sister and her husband. All right. So that's who I was supposed to search, dear friend. Okay. Gods keep you. Folk around here is decent. They mind their own business. They want to stick to it. You want to stick your nose in it? Go talk to him yourself. All right. I don't know any more than that. However, the lordly bastards handle their affairs ain't none. Put them coppers away. My pay comes from an honest day's work. Okay, okay. <coughs> what I know is it's best to be best avoided. It don't serve to anger the Glanfarthens by stopping around their sacred grounds. <laughs> if you're going to satisfy your curiosity, talk to Bodemar. He's in the temple of the north Northwest. Twitchy lady, that one. Walk from one bridge to the next and you've seen it. We're quiet, hard-working folk. We keep, our, we keep to ourselves and don't take to being pushed around. Not many anymore. Hard to keep people around when everyone's here's birth and hollowborn. <laughs> but we got a few who stick around and do business. Trigal's the leather courier. Uh, Hed Hedna? Hedina? Hendina. Okay, interesting. Uh, crafts potions and Winfrith trades the general goods. Robald's a pig farmer or was anyways. He's a courier. Courier. Treats leather. Uh, for some reason I don't think that's how you pronounce that but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, treats leather and makes armor and a few other things with it. Problem is, the smell of tallow and deer shit tends to put people off their food and his shop's right next door. Yeah, I can see that. Lady's a clever hand with potions and pul poultices. She got herself into trouble with a nest of worms, or so I hear. Her cart's on the east of the town. Been around even longer than I have. Nice enough fella, but never could find his way to the end of a sentence. His shops across the square. Ogre. Yeah, that's right. We gotta go kill the ogre. You don't hardly see them this close to town. Ogres and kith don't mix well. Ugly bastards. Oh, they're smart enough to know that much. Let's, let's look at what you got. 
How are we doing? Camping supplies. The Drake's down. So we've got two of those notes. I didn't even realize it. Uh, yeah. We'll stay in a lavish room. Be boosted pretty good for the next day. There's this work shanty I overheard the sailors singing from time to time. About a woman who gathers the names of the ones she loves. The crew. You see, and with them weaves each sailor a merry fate. You. Thank you, friend. You give me another chance. I mean, to make the most of it. I, and I know I need to make the most of it. I've been telling everyone around here how you help me. I don't remember who that is. Villager. Villager. Pace. Oh no, just generic. Major. Yeah. All right. Is there another floor? Apparently there is. talking about some old friends from defiance bay are looking for me we're not exactly friends anymore if you catch my drift i'm just trying to lie low and mind my own business know what i mean boss all right all right my friend here thinks you could maybe help us out now, I'm, I'm sure you're a busy man, so I'll make, make it worth your time. <coughs> J 
just go take a look around town. Come back and let me know if the coast is clear. Well, let me guess. Was oh, that someone named Medrith? It's a lie, plain and simple. I got on the wrong side of his employers and now he's after me. But if you're here to do his dirty work, I won't make it easy for you. What story? The Dominells came after me. I just happened to rob the wrong place. How was I supposed to know they had already claimed it? It was an honest mistake. I'm just trying to survive now. If you spoke with Medreth, you know where he's waiting. Please help me get out of here. All right, I'm trusting you. Don't have much choice. Let's see if you can uh, buy me some more time. Cat and mouse. All right. Yeah, yeah, I can even. Oh. Nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. Sharp eyes and keen ears. The work of a moment. I'll see what I can do. drunk people but I'm not worried about them all right let's get out of here so I assume when I speak with Medrith that could easily end up in a battle. All right. Let's get out of here, though. Let's go find the daughter. After we speak, to, we'll speak with Medrith, of course. actually went into let's go talk to the grieving mother I don't think I did this middle aged peasant woman is dressed in a brown leather cloth draped down to her knees her hands are working a separating stringy colorless vegetable in a pile before her Okay, paring knife. <laughs> she may be deaf. There's no indication that she heard you. First glance, she seems nothing more than a middle-aged woman, unremarkable. Maybe less stern than most. Who seemed more focused on the weaving in her lap than her surroundings. Blah blah. blah. Okay. She still pays you no mind. Her brow locks. Okay. Focus on the woman. Her brown long hair almost impossibly to the length of her hands. <laughs> As you follow the streams of her locks downward in the back, become long and black, splitting off into threads of black and silver and wrap around her hand. Okay. 
forming a soul cradle. With the threads braiding a net in front of you. Okay. A silver and black strands of her hair weave together with silver predominating as a highlight. Suddenly you reveal calm. You're on a plateau. Almost the height of the tower, several stories high. The plateau is like a table lined beneath a clear sky. Okay. The plateau is sorry, I don't feel like reading all everything tonight. as you deeper into the memory and you're certain it is a memory a warm one draw the child forth and coaxed by your hands every movement causing the chimes to sound again the child comes forth and as it does your hands are in motion weaving weaving the child cries out its cry full of life full of soul ringing ringing the chimes are going to surface and at first her cry her hands reach for or render the child to her something you have done many times before as your hands move the child echoes in the movement nothing like what you saw I saw she was wearing black shredded garments that drape over her form like streamers her hair streaks of black and run through with silver her age is almost impossible to tell she simply feels old like a crumbled watchtower as she lifts her head to face you you see that her hair is draped across the front of her face like a veil sense of relief on, for the figure. I am seen, but the eyes of others do not remember. You were the first to see me as I am, the call stripped aside. Your memories. A cadence of wheels on a caravan track. Fever. Questions by running water. Violence in a night's campfire, arrows in the dark, and fleeing. Falling rock and cracking stone, and a storm. The storm. The storm that brushed you. Did its screaming wake you from your mind's cradle? Your memory of it is painful. Its cry is difficult to ignore. It's like a child. Many children crying out. <sighs> you are able to see me. It is almost a question. You said, really, she doesn't see to know what you saw when you looked at her. To 
see me as a rare gift, a watcher's gift. So many questions, thoughts, whirling like storm winds. That storm still roars through you, deep beneath your thoughts, yet muted and secret, like an underground river. I cannot tell if it is carving new channels, or eroding what keeps your true strength buried. <sighs> the fact that you could hear it at all, survive it, is something few have ever done. Your power will grow stronger with each soul you touch, as it allowed you to reach out to mine. what a cypher can be. I kind of remember reading the intro a little bit. But that's a good stopping point, everybody. Thanks for watching. Be sure to do all the normal things like subscribe and all that jazz. But above all else, have fun. Have a great night.